Welcome to the HIV podcast. Each week we focus on a person, historical event or pop culture moment linked to HIV and explore the story of what actually happened. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jess. And between us, we've been working in the field of HIV for 40 years. Our aim is to get as many people as possible HIV educated. Welcome to the HIV podcast. Right, start again. Look, we have to agree a strategy for this. No, it's literally, it's a free-for-all, Sarah. Anyway, I've ruined it now because I went, what? So let's start again, Jess. Do you want me to go? Oh, yeah. Welcome to the HIV podcast. Why, thank you. How are you? Very good. We're in the office, aren't we? We are. So it's sad times because although we promised the sorry CCTV wire with all of the faces, Sean's face, Sharon's face, Bernie's face, sadly we're in the office today recording so there is no promote it on hashtag CCTV wire. No wires at all. I have things to say, Sarah. Excellent. Go on. I just wanted to remind everybody that on Monday, the 5th of June, so this Monday coming, it is HIV Long-Term Survivors Awareness Day. And so we've talked about this before because it was brought to our attention. So please do go on either the TVPS website and find the image or in our bio on Instagram. You can find it through our link tree, the link to the images that we made, or just make your own. Just, Just do your own. So it's not that you have to use our stuff. It's not about promoting the podcast. It's about recognizing the day it's about marking the day so please do post something to help other people be aware of that so that is on monday everyone oh that's come around quick isn't it hasn't it i know i'm like consider this your reminder so i want to see things i want to i'm gonna be checking accounts guys getting serious i'm cracking the whip here not my accounts not your accounts sarah there's never anything on your account i'll never (laughs) check your accounts (laughs) Everyone else is. I'm now just threatening people to get involved in activism. I don't believe you. I did one of those stalker things. You know, when you can check on your top 10 stalkers, you were right up there at number one. I bet I wasn't. (laughs) 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 So tell me what we have this week. Oh, this week is an interesting one. They're all interesting, everyone. So don't don't stop. Don't don't insult everyone else. We've covered on a podcast, Sarah, please. No, no, no. It's interesting because it's completely put me off now. Have I insulted everyone else we featured? No, it's interesting because it involves me looking at TikTok and you know how I feel about TikTok. It is way out of my comfort zone. Do you feel that way? It's Instagram. Well, I love Instagram and I could just look at it all day. I don't want to have that with TikTok as well. TikTok, I have to say, and this isn't some sort of TikTok promotion, by the way. Although, you know, TikTok, come at us, give us some sponsorship, please. I love TikTok. It is my favourite social media platform by a country mile. Yeah, and I think it's really misunderstood. I think people are still under the impression that it's all, you know, like dance routines. And I don't know what else people think on TikTok, to be honest. I, <laughs> I only ever hear people say, oh, it's all dance routines. There is so much on there. That, and you can learn so much, even in these tiny little videos. And the thing I find really interesting about TikTok is the algorithm gets to know what you like. So you don't see things that you're not interested in. It's totally cultivated just for you. I mean, I can see the appeal. I just don't want to get sucked into it. And you will, Sarah, you will. You know, Mm -hmm. they call it doom scrolling, don't they? With TikTok, it's less doom because I very much enjoy it. Um, But, you know, you you think you're just going to pop into TikTok for a couple of minutes, you know, two hours later. Yeah, no, 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 no. You don't need that in your life. No, I don't. But I did look at TikTok for this person because they have got... A big following. When I looked, and this was a few weeks ago, admittedly, it was 880,000 people. That's a massive following. It is a massive following. So this week we're looking at Gina too and her struggle with an AIDS diagnosis. And she went public with this in March 2022. So this is no, really God. recent. You know, a lot of the things we talk about are, I don't know, quite a few years old, if not decades old. But this is someone who's really recently come out as positive in the public eye yes and it's the way it was her approach to it that is what caught my eye I mean she's got profiles on other social media platforms as well like Instagram and YouTube but huge huge following and yes it was her approach that kind of caught my eye and I was like well this is interesting I want to know more about this person and I do think I I think she's phenomenal Well, I I don't know loads about Gina. We've started obviously following her through the HIV podcast TikTok account because a little plug there for our own TikTok. Got a TikTok account, guys, and an Instagram if you want to see behind the scenes videos. So I've only recently been having a little look. And yeah, like she is 
a force to be reckoned with. Yes, she is. And there's not not a huge amount of information in the mainstream press about her. So as I said, we're going by TikTok, we're going by her YouTube account, and we're following her story. And I think it's really important to share it. She's a very honest person. She answers people's questions about her diagnosis. Some of those questions are really blunt. And, you know, I thought, let's share her story. Maybe we can drive some traffic to her social media platform. She doesn't need it. But I think if you're that brave and that courageous, you you deserve the acknowledgement. I couldn't agree more. And I actually think perhaps her story, maybe if someone goes there and looks at her Instagram or her YouTube or her TikTok, someone will be able to relate to her story. So hopefully we'll be driving people towards it where it will be really useful for them. Yeah, I think so. Now, I don't know um, exactly how old she is now, but she's still young, isn't she? She's still very young, very young compared to me. But she talks about where she believes she contracted HIV. So she says at 18, she was living in a homeless shelter. Um, She was taken advantage of three times. She doesn't know their names. um, And she believes that's how she contracted HIV. I'm only mentioning this because this is one of the things she gets asked all the time. We talk about this so often, don't we? It's just nobody's business. I don't know why everyone thinks that it's fair game just to go and ask people that. It's absolutely none of your business. So whenever you think about asking someone that question, just remind yourself, just absolutely none of my business. Just shut up. Like, it, it's irrelevant. It's so irrelevant. And it's not an easy thing to admit that that may be how you have contracted HIV, but it sets the tone. I mean, she's a fighter. There is no doubt about that. It becomes clear very early on. That at the time, obviously, she doesn't know that she's contracted HIV. She gets a job in a recording studio and she's meeting people. She's getting free time in the in the booth. That's her words. Obviously, not my face. I liked it there. You sounded cool. Uh, and she's gaining experience as an assistant. And, and she's building her social media profiles and she's been offered modelling work. She's absolutely stunning to look at. And so everything is heading in the right direction. So a pretty, pretty rocky start, I would say, but she's kind of building her life she gets an apartment she's got a great social life she's just living life to the full now she talks about on a night out she meets nick cannon now i'm not even going to pretend i know who that is what he was married to mariah sarah's oh. face has just exploded into oh my god i know who that is um, remember they've got the twins together is that with him yeah oh, i didn't know his name oh god she meets him so she, he already follows her on Instagram. And when she sees him, when she's out socially and she sees him, she, it's an opportunity she can't overlook, nor would it be an opportunity I could overlook. Now I know who he is. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> straight walking straight past him. No idea. Yes. But, you know, she can't pass up the opportunity to go over and say hi. Uh, they get talking. They go for a drink at a, a really nice hotel. She goes home alone and she leaves the hotel first and there's paparazzi outside. He leaves after her. But the press take a picture of her, a picture of him, join the two together, and then it looks like they left together. Is that what the paparazzi do? I guess it is. Surely there should be laws against that. I don't know. It's Yeah, it's not, not great, is it? And they don't have a relationship. They don't go on to have a relationship. But she shares the image, as I would, photographed with someone that famous. Of course you're going to share it. So it increases her own social media following and of course that following is going to help her career obviously if I was papped with you I'd I'd immediately seek an injunction to get all pictures destroyed how rude (laughs) (laughs) gonna be papped by anyone it would be that Chris and Papua New Guinea why I thought we were big in Papua New Guinea oh oh my god yeah we went to number one didn't we yes was it in Papua New Guinea I thought it was Paraguay oh look Take all of this out because Gina doesn't care about any of this. Our silly witterings on you better edit all of that. I was literally staring at you like Papua New Guinea. Why would we get papped there? We're not going to get papped by anyone. Nobody's ever heard of us. Anyway, let's move on. So Gina, by this time she's living in LA. She's obviously working away, building up her career. And one day she has what she describes as booty issues. She can't poop. And when she does, it's very painful goes to the doctors in fact she goes to the doctor several times and she's none the wiser as to what's causing all of this and now she's getting other symptoms an itchy skin rash for example is one of them that she talks about now people on tiktok and people on instagram 
have called her out on this and said, oh, come on, when you started getting those symptoms, weren't you testing for STIs? And she says, well, I did, actually. And I thought included in those tests would be a test for HIV. She didn't realise HIV wasn't included in those tests. She just asked for an STD test. I think, you know, you're going to be guided by your physician, by your, like, we say GP here, don't we? But by your doctor, you're going to be guided by then. And also, if you're asking for an STI test, I'm absolutely with her. I would assume, well, every STI test should, it should be including HIV. You would assume it has included that. I mean, those aren't symptoms that I would instantly associate with HIV. If we're honest, we do get asked a lot. I do have a lot of calls about people, you know, that have a rash and so instantly assume that that that's probably a symptom of HIV and while it can be it's not always and like you're saying it's not always the first thing that's going to cause a rash either it sounds like she's having to deal with an awful lot of um, very intrusive questions now I know she's being open on her platforms but that still doesn't mean that's a really easy thing for everyone just to feel like they own a piece of you and they get to just ask whatever they like I know Anyway, her health gets worse. So she's getting headaches, she's getting fevers, and she goes to see three different GPs. The first one says she's fine. She's like, well, I'm really not. The second one says they suspect cervical cancer. So she goes to see a third doctor. Third doctor says, no, this isn't cervical cancer. Oh, can you imagine by this stage? That is like fighting for your own health, isn't it? You're like, please help me. I'm just going to keep going to doctors. Um, And by now, she is finding it much harder to do stuff, day-to-day life, uh, because she's got no energy. Her friends are delivering food to her front door, but she hasn't got the energy to go and get the food. And her symptoms are getting worse, so sickness, diarrhoea. In the end, she just resorts to getting an Uber to the hospital. The hospital check her over, and they say she's fine, and they discharge her, but... Before she leaves the hospital, she needs the bathroom. And and as she comes out of the bathroom, the doctor runs up. He's trying to catch up with her. And he says, oh, thank God you haven't left. Something's not right. We need to run more tests. And they admit her to hospital. So finally, so someone's realised what's going on. I mean, where was that doctor at the start? Where was he when they were discharging her? I know. So they do that. They admit her. They organise more tests. Everything's kind of inconclusive. And then the doctor says to her, Almost in passing, he says, well, you do know you're of AIDS? And she's like, no, I do. And he's like, yes. And that's pretty much how she was told her diagnosis, as blunt as that. No further support. Oh, look at you with your little mouth open. Just because that's such, um, I mean, you must go into a bit of shock. Like you're saying, such a blunt way of being like, right, well, you know you've got this. That's shocking. So do we know what, like how, how this was missed, how she was never told? No, she's saying that's the first I knew about it. Doctors clearly assumed that she already knew, but of course she didn't. Oh, it's just, it's not the best way to be told. And then to not offer any follow-up support, is it, that's not acceptable. Well, imagine the questions you'd be left with. Mm. They do give her a month's worth of HIV meds. Um, she doesn't have insurance. So America's different to over here, isn't it? Um, and she doesn't have insurance, so that's all she's allowed. I have so many things to say about the American healthcare <laughs> system, but I won't say them. I thought you might. That is awful. How, honestly, how 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 can that happen? How? I know. Now, her mum picks her up, takes her home to look after her. And of course, she's only got limited medication, so her issues continue. So by now, she's lost so much weight that she weighs um, 60 pounds, which I think is about four stone. Yeah, about four stone. And she ends up back in hospital on 16 pills a day and having blood transfusions because she's now so weak. And she's starting to have panic attacks because she's like, I'm I'm dying. Well, and she's open about all of this on her social media. And she gets messages from people saying, don't take the pills that the hospital are giving you. Go for the natural route. I mean, we get so many of those comments underneath all of our podcasting. I am forever fighting a sea of Dr. Smith and his herbal remedies, you know, don't take your medication. And it's just awful that people still are promoting that message. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm sure we don't need to say it here, but there's no natural route with HIV. There isn't a homeopathic remedy that can manage HIV. The only way to manage it is by taking HIV medication. 
Okay. So she's got some people saying, don't take the medication they give you. Don't trust them. She's got other people saying, well, you have to take this medication or you'll die. Um, and we'll put, let, put all of this into context. She is a young woman, doesn't have uh, much information about HIV, who's told by a doctor in a manner that no one should be told their diagnosis. And then she's got people messaging advice. And you think it's as much as she can do to just stay alive. Exactly. And also, I'm imagining without insurance, it must be quite terrifying as well. Even I know you're probably not thinking of that if you're thinking you're dying, but then it's almost like, well, I take the medication and I've been in hospital all this time. I must owe thousands. It must be just a big clusterfuck, <laughs> if I can say that. I think you can say that. No, but I know absolutely so much going on for such a young person, for such a young person who didn't know that, you know, she had this medical condition. It is an awful lot. In one of the YouTube videos that I've watched of her, she says, I preach to take the medication. So she's kind of shutting everybody down who's saying, oh, no, no, I don't think you should do that. And then she also talks about in the same video um, about being discharged from hospital. And she's saying, you know, if you're in the same situation as me, you can get your life back. I will walk again. I will see again. And by this point, I was like, what? What's going on here? This is like the 80s. We are going to explore this because, yeah, so she, she couldn't walk and she essentially had lost her sight. Yes, in one eye. Yeah. Oh so, it, I mean, it, it's a true kind of AIDS diagnosis, really, in America last year. Yeah, yeah. L literally last year like 2022. So what had happened to lovely Gina is that she had developed something called CMV. I won't pronounce the full medical name for it. I can't. But it's related to the herpes virus. You know, the herpes virus causes cold sores, chicken pox. It's that family of viruses. Yeah. Um, and once you've got that virus, it stays in the body for the rest of your life. So once you've had chicken pox, theory, you can't get it again because you've got the virus in your system already, blah, blah, blah. Now, usually your immune system can control viruses like that. So, you know, if you get something like chickenpox, very rare for people to die from it, isn't it? And that's because your immune system can fight it off. Um, and actually, most people don't realise that they have the virus in their body still. But if you have advanced HIV, a virus like CMV can cause huge damage. So it can cause an eye infection um, called retinitis, and that can lead to blindness. And this is what Gina's got. Oh, wow. And is this also how um, she lost the use of her legs? So the CMV wouldn't, I don't think the CMV would have caused that. I think that comes from being so weak, so underweight, the muscle wastage. Right, um, of course. And legs just not being, I mean, it may well have been caused by um, another medical condition. It might be linked to CMV. I'm not a doctor. But just having the two of them. So she's losing her vision. She is currently 99% blind in one eye. But this, as she's saying, that can be cured. Then so she should hopefully regain sight. And now we should point out that her viral load is undetectable. But it's a long road, isn't it, back from that point to regain your full health. So she said her CD4 count is increasing. It's now above 200 and she's gaining weight. She isn't able to walk unaided just yet, but it is all heading in the right direction. Just to survive is amazing, isn't it? And to be recovering this this well is yes. is unreal. I know. And when and as like I said, she's so honest on her social media platforms about her current health, the struggles that she's facing. And most people aren't, are they? No. I mean, we talk about it a lot, how an awful lot of people choose not to disclose their status publicly. And so, again, you know, when Sarah had said to me, right, I really, really want to cover this amazing woman. This was one of the things that you had said, you know, this is a recent diagnosis. She's been through an unbelievable amount and she's sharing. She has this huge platform and she's choosing to share her story all about her HIV and it's educating so many people. Yeah. And she talks about beating it. She's, she's very open about how she knows she'll be judged for having HIV, for getting so sick. But to her credit, and I think people forget this, she was trying to seek help. She went to the doctor numerous times to say, I'm not well, something's not right. And none of the medical professionals thought to test for HIV. 
But that's the story we hear so often. So often. It's like the very last thing that's tested for. It's like everything else is tested for. And that's the last thing. And then it's like, oh, the penny's dropped now. Like, yeah. Um, and she's also honest about the fact that she was open in, about her diagnosis initially because she thought she was going to die. She's got a big following and she thought, well, kind of people deserve to know what's going on. So she's very clear. She's not an activist. She's not doing this really to raise awareness about HIV, although that's what has happened. It's more about the fact that she's so unwell and she wants people to know the truth. Obviously, now she's much, much better. And she's saying, well, you know, I've survived. And, you know, there is that possibility that had she known in hospital that the outcome would be that she would be alive, she might not have shared her diagnosis. But I'm so glad she did. I think it's such a brave thing to do. But I think it's also helped so many people along the way. And I think it's a new way of raising awareness isn't it so one of the youtube videos i watched there were 3734 comments 13000 likes 699000 views and all the comments i scrolled through were act- were really supportive sharing their own experiences of hiv praising her bravery her courage her honesty and that is why we need people like Gina within our HIV community, because she is educating a whole new generation. She's reaching people that we, as in the HIV sector, could never reach. And she's doing it in a very kind of matter of fact, very open manner. She's being accessible, actually, isn't she? She's being accessible and allowing people to ask her questions. Like you said, she's answering some extremely blunt questions. I was talking about this with actually someone else in the sector yesterday, and they were saying, you know, We might sometimes think that some of the questions asked are stupid, but if people are asking the questions, they need to be answered. Yes. And I think, you know, the good point about questions, she addresses questions head on and there is absolutely no shying away from anything with her. So she will answer anybody's question, no matter kind of how intrusive. And some of them I feel are really intrusive, but she's just like very upfront about everything. Um, And again, is that a new approach to kind of HIV awareness, like you say, giving people the platform to ask them and anything they want, no matter how kind of intrusive or rude, if you've got an observation and a, or a question, she'll answer it, but she'll tell you straight. Yeah, you're allowing people to ask them, but you're not going to sugarcoat it. You're not going to sugarcoat your response. You're just going to be super direct. Yeah, and yeah. she calls people out. So if people are saying, well, I don't know if you're telling the truth, she's just like, are you serious? Because no. And you do get people like that, don't you? That will be like, oh, you're just doing it for the likes. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And and so and I like that approach. I think we need more people like that. I would love to be a bit more like that in our day job. What? More kind of blunt. Yeah. Just really blunt. And obviously you can't always be because, you know, people are, you know, worried or nervous some of the time. But you know, we do encounter quite a few rude people. More so now, I think, than ever before. Yeah. yeah, I wish I yeah, I wish we could too. But, maybe we should just try. I mean, maybe. Maybe that's something to give a well to. Sean will be so pleased listening to this, our boss. He'll be like, oh no, what are they doing? They've now decided to be extra blunt with people. <laughs> like this is not what we need from a support service. Not to our clients, by the way, that we're supporting around their HIV diagnosis. I'm more talking about we get some very rude people ringing up to test who demand to test immediately or, you know, very shouty. Not everything's immediate, unfortunately, in this life. No, but I think that's just the way people are now, isn't it? You know, we've had requests to, what, courier tests over to people, to drop them off. The irony, though, I always say to people, you can go, we literally talked about this last week, you can go to pharmacies or places like Boots, Superdrug, you can buy a home test. You could do that right now. If you have the time to come and test, then you have the time to pop to a shop and buy a test and test yourself. You know, I'm giving you the tools to do that. I don't know why that doesn't happen. Maybe they just want to shout at someone that day. I think that is part of that. Anyway, back to Gina. Yeah. (laughs) So anyway, the main reason for wanting to feature her, well, no, there were lots of reasons. She is amazing. I really like her attitude. Uh, She, I think she's handling all of this fantastically well. And when I watch her videos, or anything that she does on social media. Do you know what? I genuinely start to believe that we can dis- diminish the stigma. You know, I'm shocked that 
she became so ill in America, one of the richest countries in the world. But like I said, full of admiration for her attitude. And I think, you know, moving forward, she might never even get to listen to this episode. But I hope that she knows some way or another that we are all rooting for her and sending her lots of love. She's amazing. Amazingly well said, Sarah. And what what a person to feature. Unbelievable. And there you go. Gene the two. HIV hero. Yeah, she really is. And even if that's, you know, you've said yourself, she doesn't really want to be an advocate. That's not ever what she set out to be. But I suppose sometimes inadvertently that happens alongside, you know, your honesty and your bravery and your courage in sharing everything. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Good on her. She's so lovely. Isn't she? And it's an amazing episode in comparison to the one where you just slammed Sharon Stone last week. Oh, but I didn't. I'm jo- I'm jo- I'm literally winding Sarah up because she felt so bad afterwards. Obviously, if you listened, we really didn't. We were just debating the fact that Sharon Stone had said that her career had taken a massive hit due to the fact that she was involved in an HIV, well, in HIV support work. And so, yeah, I've just been torturing Sarah all week um, about that, saying, "Wow, well, Sharon Stone won't be happy. No, she might sue us. She definitely can't sue us, Sarah, for an opinion. Well, I don't know. Seem to be able to sue for anything these days. Uh, no, it, it was just our opinion. But no, an, a really good episode. Thank you for featuring Gina. Maybe if Gina ever comes over to the UK, she could kind of hook up with us. Oh, I imagine being seen out with somebody that trendy. Trendy. It's not really. It's like when, you know, like when someone goes, oh, I've bought a funky cardigan and I'm like, get in the bin. No. No oh, what would how would you describe people these days then? How would I? Oh, that's hard. It's I, just very cool. Yeah, oh yeah, no, she absolutely she is. She's like, yeah, definitely. Um, and obviously we'll put all of her um we'll put the handles for her social media accounts below the podcast episode so that you can go and check her out as well. And please do. Yeah. So all those people in Papua New Guinea who are new listeners, can check her out. I'm actually gonna go and check if Papua New Guinea anyone there even listens to us. <laughs> it's been a magical episode sarah do you oh i do know what we're doing next week and i'm really excited about it well i'm still looking at Papua new guinea no no listen to me now beautiful. back in the room back in the room sarah listen to me beautiful country jess you didn't give this much love to paraguay who you thought you were talking about when you talked about Papua new guinea and we went to number one in the charts in paraguay and you <laughs> didn't even give this much love to them i oh, come on right what are we doing next week? Well, next week is all about sex, baby. Is it? Yes, it's National Sex Day. Is it? Yeah, the next podcast. So it's all around sex, orgasm, sex toys and HIV. Sarah's going to take us through her collection of butt plugs and anal beads. Yes. <laughs> That's basically all of next week's episode. So I bet you, you're all... demonstrating different toys to yeah. everybody. You're all what my preferences are. No, do you know what? I'm checking because I've got it here. I'm just checking if it really is all about. Oh, okay. No, there are lots. There's lots about sex in here, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You've got it all summed up. I'm very excited about next week's episode. It's going to be a good one. What do anal beads look like? Is it like a necklace? Should I hang something from the CCTV wire? Thanks for listening to the HIV podcast. If you enjoyed our podcast, please like, rate, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can now also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at The HIV Podcast for behind the scenes insights and video. The HIV Podcast is produced by Thames Valley Positive Support.